Uh, I'm Benji Aguilar, the Booster Club President on behalf of the board and Coach Scorch. Welcome again for another round of Booster Club for Team Auto. Uh, just a quick uh, agenda of what we're going to be doing tonight. Uh, just Tracy, uh, Miss Tracy has already been going around uh, taking attendance and roll, uh, as well as uh, taking uh, your decisions on the uh, last meeting's uh, minutes, if you guys approve or not, just a formality of, uh, for a boost of love. Um, then we're going to go over basically the, the budget for Team Auto, uh, how things are being spent, um, what we're going to be doing for, I guess, the remainder of the season, and how we're going to cover all that. And we're going to go over Autobotics, that's our summer camp um, that the team provides. Um, so, we'll details on that. And of course, Details on our final two competition dates, our uh, date for Athens for state and Houston, which is the, the world. And then after that, we'll, any Q&A or any other items uh, that we haven't covered that you may have any questions on. Cool. So uh, we already, I think we already went to the motion. We're all set with minute approval, thank you. All right, it's okay. Second that one. Uh -huh. Cool. Uh, so just a quick thing, Marty's just going to go over where we stand as a team, um, and okay. you go I was over. hoping those numbers would be a little bit bigger for you guys to see, because they need to be bigger, is really the message that I'm going to share. Maybe we can turn off the lights up front, I don't know. Well, that put people like to sleep. No. <laughs> Let's just leave mine. Yeah. that. Um, anyhow, if you guys remember from when we passed our budget, we had a sponsorship budget of $25,000 and a fundraising budget of $18,000. This is on the revenue side. In other words, what we were planning to take in. Um, and that was in support of a budget on the expense side that matched those numbers. Um, towards the bottom, can you guys see those? Is the desk blocking that? Okay. Towards the bottom, you can see that we're under on our, our numbers here. Um, sponsorships is down a little bit less than um, 7500 bucks. Fundraising hasn't even really started. Um, and for all practical purposes, that could be a zero down there at the bottom, not a 70. So the good news, bad news, the, and I'll start with bad news first. The bad news is, is we're just not planning, we're expecting to hit the mark on what we had hoped for sponsorships. Um, the good news is that we had really been holding the line on expenses on the team. And when we realized we weren't hitting this, we did an exercise of going through and prioritizing what we were going to need to purchase this year, and we've done that. Um, and we feel like from the team's objectives, we can hit their goals and support them financially. They're going to do with less this year, but that less comes from extras that we were hoping to add into the team this year. So that's not necessarily bad news. Um, but the good news is that we can handle that. But that expects us to do, and we'll talk about this later in the slides, some fundraising, and we really need parent support to do this. That fundraising line of 18000 in revenue, I really hope we do hit that. That's going to be a critical line that sets us up in future years and also through the summer for this year. So um, I have some details. If you guys want to look at how we adjusted the budget, I can talk with you after the meeting. Um, you can email me or call me at that number up on there too as well. I'm happy to share some details for you. Any questions? That's the next slide. <laughs> if not, then we can move along. Thank you. Yeah, so on that note, um, I guess uh, I think you guys received an email uh, asking for assistance with the Autobotics. And um, Autobotics is, is a very big program that we recently started up. We're, we're going to be in our second year, and it's a definitely a, an incredible opportunity for the team to raise money. It's also it gives an opportunity to, to be an outreach to up, up and coming students. And the program is for uh, kids that are between uh, on the second, second to se seventh grade, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a great opportunity for them to be introduced uh, into the ro into, to the uh, robotics technology, um, play around with uh, VEX robots. Uh, some schools I know already have a certain uh, like Lego, Lego League uh, type uh, programs. This is just an extension of that. Um, to sort of have a preview of what you may uh, experience in high school level. So it definitely helps them. Uh, keep that interest with them as they go along uh, through the various grades. Um, it's definitely a, an incredible uh, fundraising opportunity, not only for, I mean, basically for the team. It's just, um, as Marty was pointing out, a uh, fundraising deal that'll just um, give the team 
the, the necessary funding to do all sorts of things with, uh, with, with not only during the season, but also the off-season where there are other programs um, like RRI, which we, we, can, we can elaborate on that uh, later on. Uh, but all these things does require a team, not only of students, but we're also looking for parents to help us out. Um, it's pretty much a, a two-week period in June, um, just like summer camp if you've ever been through uh, when you were younger. Um, it's the same, pretty much the same concept, but however, you know, we, we need counselors and we also need uh, adults to kind of help us out. So, if you, if you, if you have the skills or necessary, uh, to, or if you have the time, we'd really like to see if we can help us out on, on these things. Um, you know what we sent you? Yeah. Um, I think we're looking at the week of June 4th and then the following week of June 11th. Once the camp is established, the biggest role that our students and that our parents will play is by marketing the camp, get the word of mouth out, help drive in registration for the camp. Um, but in particular this year, we've got a project plan. We just need a resource to help guide the students to complete the work between now, especially the end of the month, yeah. so that we can begin registration Campers mm -hmm. to build a camp. Yeah. And we have, we have some motivated students already just uh, waiting, step, waiting to step up, but we just need uh, the parents to help us along mm -hmm. with that journey. Alright, any questions so far? So, definitely, uh, if you, if you uh, want to help Team Ottawa, this is, this is a very good opportunity to help get set up. Alright. All right, so just a quick uh, review and preview of, uh, of the season, how it's going so far. Yeah. George. Okay. Uh, you all know me. Um, so, Gainesville and Dalton, uh, to let you know, the way Georgia runs its events, we're a district state, which means uh, in other states, like when I was in Florida, you have regional qualifiers, which means there's three competitions in that state, and you had to win at one of those competitions or place at one of those competitions in order to progress to worlds and so it was an all or nothing kind of thing. Uh, here in Georgia they, they uh, make it in what I consider a little bit more fair where it's a district competition. So you have to go to two district events and you earn points at those district events. Our two district events were Gainesville and Dalton. Um, we are currently, we are locked in to making it to Athens of State even though there's still another event to play which is Duluth that is going on currently, which has South Forsyth and West Forsyth there competing. Um, we are, based on the district points we earned at those two by winning the Gainesville event and coming in second at the Dalton event, we are guaranteed a spot, a high spot at state. Um, so that's where we'll be moving forward to Athens, but... Oh. Can't throw support, got it. All right. Um, because of our good finishes at Gainesville and Dalton, we'll be progressing to state. We've already uh, started moving that way. And then, um, based on our performance at state, we will also get an invitation to Houston. We are right about 95% sure that we are going to get an invite to Houston. Um, the way FIRST does it is they hold on to those until Basically, all the chips are out. Basically, all the cards are out. However, if you are a, a proven team that has gone to Worlds before and you are meeting your the standard that you, they think you should meet, you're going to go. And we are this year. Um, and it looks like we're even uh, going to be done with the robot before we make it to state this year, which is always a positive. Um, so as far as uh, Athens preview and qualification, Athens is a, a very different event. Actually, is that the next slide? Right. No, that would be logistics. Oh, okay, all right. Athens is a very, uh, a very different event. Gainesville and Dalton, if you came to one of those or if you watched the live stream or anything like that, basically we rolled in um, on either a, uh, like a, a, a Thursday night or a, or a Friday night loaded up, had about five hours to work in the pits, and then the next day started the qualifications, it was all qualifications that following day, and then the, the third day was half qualifications, half finals. Um, the way Athens works is like one of the big regional events from one of the other states. You, We will roll in Wednesday evening, um, 
dump all of our stuff. We're not allowed to set anything up. But then Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is Thursday is working on your robot and uh, practice matches. And then Friday and Saturday is true state competition, where at the end of that competition, we will have a state champion uh, alliance, which should be us. So um, after that. We have Houston. Now, Houston is, uh, if, if Athens is a much bigger event, Houston is a, uh, a just a, a giant event in all ways, shapes, and forms. Basically, the way it works is there's a convention center out in Houston. Half of the teams in the world go to Houston. Half the teams go to Detroit. I think we can all be a little happy that we are going to Houston and not Detroit. Um, but they have different, there's so many teams that go to Houston that they have different divisions set up there. You go into the divisions, there's a draft uh, where you get teammates and then you play through your division, which then the division champions play against each other in the finals and you end up with a world champion in robotics. So, very big deal, very big stage. Uh, it's a crazy amount of energy. So if you find that you have some free time uh, over uh, the second week of the spring break and you want to come and see what your kid's all about, the Athens is held in the Stegman Coliseum on uh, UGA's campus, and if you're really feeling uh, like you just need to get out of town for a little bit, uh, we can get you all the information on Houston as well if you'd like to stop by. Or you can always stream the events and watch them live on uh, the Blue Alliance app. So that brings us to the logistics of the trips. I feel like sitting, Caitlin, but do you want me to stand somewhere? <laughs> you can sit. Oh, I can sit. I'll stand up. I'm Tracy. I volunteer um, for the team and help plan and execute the logistics of our team travel along with Robin Chapman. And so uh, in regards to Athens, the team will be leaving on Wednesday during spring break week. I think Coach will probably talk a little bit about practices leading up to that. Uh, the chaperones, we have two school uh, chaperones, that's Mr. Scorch. And Lori Karakoff. Ms. Karakoff is a math teacher here. No, chemistry, chemistry teacher. Chemistry teacher, even better. Uh, and they'll be escorting the kids over there in addition to Kellen Hill, our lead mentor. And then a few of us adults will be popping over and spending time. But it really is a great uh, event. If you're not able to go, you know, catch the matches online. Uh, I'll be watching mostly online and one over the last day. The team will travel by bus. The important time for your kids to note for April 4th is to be here by 3.15 to help load the bus. Anybody that's late will have to travel with a parent and meet the team over in Athens. Um, the team itinerary and food, Robin will speak to, as well as any forms that the kids need to have filled out. And then I'll come back and talk about um, our hotel and lodging. So Rob, I've got some trip agreements there. Um, anything from the itinerary or food orders? I'll be very quick. The um, trip, you'll be getting an email that has the itinerary on it. Like I say, we're leaving at 3.15 on Tuesday. Tuesday? Or, 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 I mean, I'm sorry. Wednesday. 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 It's just Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Wednesday. You knew that was going to happen, right? Yes. We, I heard it coming. I heard it coming. Trip agreement that every student has to sign for each trip. I know you've all signed it before, but it's just... We have to do it for each trip. Maybe a little few things have changed, so you may want to read it. Um, food, we will have food brought in each day for lunch. We may do things a little differently for dinner. We may go out at night, or we may have things brought into the hotel, but meals will be provided for your child, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We do ask that they bring their own water bottle so that they can refill it during the day because it is hard to just carry that many water bottles. And Stegman has out. a really, really nice, like, purified. Like, yeah. yeah. It's hard to just carry that many water bottles to supply them numerous water bottles throughout the day. So you will receive an email later on with trip agreement if you do not pick one up today and with an itinerary. If you have any other questions, feel free to contact me. Or if you have any, um, if there's if your child has any dietary restrictions, if you could let me know, if we don't already know about that, that would be very helpful, just with planning meals, so that we just have everything covered. I think that should talk about it. The trip agreement would, have, would be in the email that brought you here today, 
and it should be in tonight's email that goes out, or I might send it in the morning, depending on um, what awaits me at home. So we can move forward to the next slide. We've got 22 students going to the Athens event. Make sure if you if you have paid for your student that they're on that list. We do have room for one more male student, um, and that payment would be due by tonight. Um, but we've got a healthy crew going over to Athens. We won the state, uh, state championship last year, and we're ranked either third or fourth going into the tournament this year. So, fourth. Fourth? Yeah. Okay, Rubble even better. Did manage to pull two points in their final match. And so even so. better. <laughs> this is, um, so we can move forward a slide, Mr. Scorch. Bing. I should say. Uh, we are staying at the same hotel as last year. There's either three or four to a room. And the coach and Ms. Carol Barth will stay in there with the kids. If you need to take a picture of this slide, go ahead. This is the address of the hotel. It's also going to be printed on the team itinerary that comes in the next email to you. The team itinerary gives you a look as to what the team is doing every day. And it also has a link to the event schedule. And that's where you can follow along to see when the matches are happening. And if you haven't already downloaded on your smartphone one of the phone apps, uh, Sp FRC Spider or the Blue Alliance, that will show you when our team is going to be on the field and where to watch online. Are there any questions about Athens? How we're going to get there? Where we're going to stay? Who's watching the kids? What forms do I need? I have one more form that I did not touch on. And that is the form if you are going to Athens and your child is going to drive home with you on Saturday. I just need you to fill this form out before we leave so that we are not looking for your child desperately on Saturday afternoon when we go to the bus. And I have extra forms. The next email with the Athens itinerary also instructs the students on what shirts to wear with. <coughs> and we would really appreciate it if they brought their own refillable water bottle. I think we touched upon that before. And we will provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but there is no, there are no snacks. So if your kid <coughs> thinks they might get hungry, bring some concession money or pack some snacks in their bags. Any thoughts on what they should or shouldn't bring on the bus? Uh, I mean, oh yeah, okay, if you, thank you, if your kid has a duffel bag, it is much easier for us to fit duffel bags on the bus and under seats and in storage containers than it is to fit suitcases um, on the bus, so if they have a duffel bag, maybe next year some, uh, some, where's Marty, some Team Auto printed duffel bags, I don't know, maybe that should be added to the store, but... If we get fundraise... Yeah, I was going to say, if... I will get everyone personalized. <laughs> if we have, if your kid has a duffel bag, it makes it a lot easier, because we, you know, the back of the bus is open, but we pack all of our tools and the robot and everything back there, and so then when it comes time to actually fitting bags, uh, we have 22 students on this, and so not enough seats on the bus for every student to have their own seat and sit with their bag. So if you have enough, I understand some people don't, that's, that's okay, we made it work before, we'll make it work again, but if you if you have a duffel bag, please have your kid pack in that, because it is so much easier to fit on the bus. Oh, and also, if they're not used to traveling, definitely need to make sure they have everything they need to travel and stay overnight places, so. We'd be thinking about the other end. Exactly. <laughs> Personal hygiene yeah. items. Maybe some like, look, we know they're all gonna, we know they're all gonna pack the Xbox. And maybe toothpaste should go along with it. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well let's talk about Houston. I know we've got Gavin's mom, Tanner's mom, Megan's mom. Any other Houston parents? Here oh and Key is here. Uh, Houston is a big deal for us this year because we're flying. Uh, we worked hard to make both the Athens and the Houston trips as affordable as possible, but they're still, still pretty pricey. I've uh, got two kids in the program and it's, it's a big deal for us. This is probably our summer vacation and winter extravaganza, sending our two kids to robotics. Um, when we reach out about summer camp, We've got huge potential to raise some huge dollars in a short amount of time without anybody walking around selling gift wrap. 
If we can really make those camps robust, and as parents we work to advertise a camp and drive in campers to register and pay and attend these camps, then these trips have the potential of being smaller in price. Am I accurate in saying that? You are accurate. As a matter okay. of fact, in fundraising, with, especially with autobotics, we give credit to the students for participating as counselors. Yeah. Um, we have one student this year that I think has paid a total of $275. And that included their booster fees, both of their district events in Athens. They were able to work on all of that by participating. <laughs> so I can go on and on for hours. I'll stop now. But fundraising can save your family a lot of money, too, not just the team. So for Houston, um, those dates of the 18th through the 22nd were flying down on that Wednesday. The largest group of kids will be with Coach Scorch on an early morning flight out of Atlanta. Yay. They will meet Mr. Scorch. You'll get more details about this once we get past Athens, but you need to go ahead and write in your calendars to meet Mr. Scorch at MARTA, the latest at 4.45 a.m. No, no, no. MARTA, uh, 5, 5, 5, 5. 45. To the airport with Becky D, and she's a math teacher in the STEM program. Uh -huh. yeah. The kids love her too. And she knows her <laughs> so they'll be in good hands. Southwest does load, I call it cattle car, so there are no assigned seats. Uh, Tanner is a first time flyer, yes. and that'll be very exciting. <laughs> what will be even more exciting and thrilling for Coach is if they have liquids, chapstick, and other things. <laughs> while going through security. So we're asking parents to really have robust conversations with their students flying to Houston about what to do and say through security, what to do and not bring on their carry-on luggage. We are promoting duffel bags because that's what fits best in the carry-on. Uh, we would really love it if no one checks bags. And I could put four t-shirts, two jeans, four underwears, four socks, and my water bottle in a duffel bag with a toothpaste, toothpaste, uh, toothbrush, toothpaste, and deodorant. Everything else, not necessary for this trip. No guitar heroes. Okay? Lean and light. <laughs> There's no liquid in that water bottle, right? No. <laughs> you can show yeah. your socks and your deodorant. That's it, exactly. There we go. <laughs> really maximize that space. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares that water tastes a little funny for the next couple of days? Um, our chaperones uh, are going to stay with the kids at all times. Then we have some additional adults going along with the trip. They will help out, but our official chaperones are uh, Mr. Scorch and Ms. Dean. Uh, Benji's going, Robin's going, Casey's dad is going, Kellen is always with the group too. And I'm a late dad. And a late dad. Um, we have kids that are going that are veterans of this event, and they are contained in the convention center, they are contained in the hotel, and we have a seven block walk. Um, we will be flying into the Hobby Airport. There is one vehicle that Mr. Scorch's group of 15 are getting in and driving directly to the hotel. Ms. Dean, Tanner, and Gavin will ride a super shuttle from the airport to the hotel, and they will fold in and meet the group at the convention center. Let's go ahead and move to the next slide. <laughs> so these are the 12 that are going. Uh, 10 of the 12 have paid, and the deadline to make payment is tonight. We need to start paying hotels and transportation companies on Monday. So that's the people. Um, Let's move on to the next slide there, Dusty. Yeah. All right, I'm going to have to revisit these MARTA times because I got some early times there. For Mrs. Dean, I'm pretty sure 9.30 <laughs> since 
they're flying out at 1.40, we want to allow an hour for the martyr ride, an hour for security, an hour to be there before the gate. Yes, Keith. Do we need to bring money for a martyr card? I have plans to buy everyone a martyr card. It's going to be your job to hold on to it once you get it and not lose it. Because Which will be your at the martyr station as we're walking through the turnstile and I hand it to you. <laughs> Okay. And the market card should be prepaid, right? Yeah, okay. it'll be loaded. I'm thinking of you meeting with Steve at, at Marty. <laughs> yes. Okay. We, they do not drive students. North Teachers Street. cannot drive students. North Springs. North, North, North Springs Morning Station. And that's all going to be packaged in an email that comes to you after after us. Um, student travelers. If you have ID, bring it. And key, I'm talking about your face and passport. And Megan, I'm talking about a learner's permit. TSA does not require flyers under the age of 18 to go through security. They will be with Coach, they will be with Ms. Dean. However, we like to kind of not have any surprises. If you have ID, bring it and be responsible for it. And um, parents, Keith and Tanner, first <laughs> timer. We really don't want to have any stalls or surprises in airport security. That's what's keeping me awake at night. <laughs> um, and we must be on time. If you're not at MARTA at that time, they've got to leave. Because we never know what security is going to be like at Hartsfield Jackson Airport. And if they're not there when coach leaves, you've got to drive them down to Hartsfield. Let's move on um, to the next slide, and then I'll stop and get some questions. Uh, Key, I think your mom asked this. When you were making the flight reservation for your students, a few of you were asked by Southwest for the confirmation number of your student. We're going to post this on our website, too. But this is going to be something, if you want to take a photo of it, this is the one slide to take a photo of it if your kid's going to Houston. You may want to go back into your student's flight reservation and add their adult supervisor, Mr. Scorch or Ms. Becky Dean, those are their flight confirmation numbers. My kids' flight reservation did not prompt me for that. It just simply asked me, is an adult flying with them? I'm like, well, with Coach Scorch, yeah. Did you call for me as an adult? Yeah, we are this time. We hope the school system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the hotel's very nice. It's seven blocks from the venue. And it's a 12-minute walk. And your kids will be thoroughly worn out at the end of this week. It's long days. <laughs> and it's very exciting. All right, let's see what's next on the slides, Dusty. Okay. I'm going to speak to this one a little bit, Coach. Sure. The team emails that we sent out, and students, I'm talking to you especially. Our system can track how many people open it, how many people receive it, how many click on the links. We have about a 50% read rate. So half of the folks that are getting our emails, are, are the, their email addresses are not opening these emails. And that concerns me, especially with Athens and Houston. <laughs> the students also use Slack as their last minute communication method. They have got to use it, they've got to press those acknowledge bus buttons, and if there's action items in emails, you've got to respond, because we just, we just are spread thin, and I don't have it in me to do multiple reminders. So, uh, every, you've got all the information for Athens, you'll get the team itinerary tonight or in the morning. Your students must be opening these emails to provide you the information you need, and all the parents get them as well. Um, Coach, can you update us on when the team is going to practice between now and leaving for Athens? Okay, so uh, we have a couple changes to, to the practice schedule. Uh, the first one being that this Saturday, there is no practice here at the school. Um, Kellen Hill, our, our lead mentor, has, uh, is heading down to Atlanta. There is a what's called a Destination Einstein field, which is basically a full field setup for teams to come and use uh, before big events. And he is working to, he's gonna go down there, and I know some students are planning on joining him, 
but there will be no practice here at the school. This is not a mandatory meeting. This isn't like a you get you know you get kicked out of STEM or anything like that. If your student wants to go and you want them to go, then that is okay in your prerogative. Um, there also will not be practice on Monday night. So if they don't, and I would never, you know, recommend this, but if they don't go to that practice on Saturday down at the destination field, that means that they would have the first weekend of spring break to, you know, spend with family. How will they know the details of the Saturday practice? Uh, is that being communicated? That is all being communicated through Slack. Okay. And it's so out there already. They can it is out there already. It was out there six. earlier this week. Ten to six on Saturday, one to six on Sunday, and there's two forms that need to be signed. Yes. So ten to six on Saturday, one to six on Sunday, and there are two forms that need to be signed. If like we put this stuff out there, your students all like it. it beams them every time that we send something out to them about this. And so their phone lights up. They can also check Slack on a computer. They can check Slack on pretty much anything that, that is electronic. They can check Slack on it. Um, and so if you are hankering for some information, all you need to do is prod them a couple times and tell them to log into that Slack. And we have what's called an announcements channel. That's where we basically put everything of any importance that everyone has to read. We throw it in there first. Um, so, yes, ma'am. I'm confused. Sure. Is there practice or is there no practice? Okay, so there is no practice at the school. Okay. I will not be down there. Is there practice on 10 to 6? That's, that's at the destination Einstein Field down in Atlanta. Oh. If they are going to that, I that see. is that timing okay. that they're going to be so down no there. So no practice Saturday, no practice Monday? No. Tuesday. 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 Tuesday and Wednesday, we are going to, uh, I will be here. I have. Because I am living a frivolous life and like to go on all these trips and everything like that, I have fallen a little bit behind on schoolwork. So my family is going out of town on Monday. So Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm going to be putting in some major hours up here at the school to get grading and lesson planning and the millions of pages of paperwork that we have to have to teach uh, all in order for the rest of the year so I don't have to worry about it again. So on Tuesday, I will be up here from 7 o'clock in the morning to 7 o'clock in the evening. And as long as I'm here, we can have practice. Once again, this is not mandatory by any means. This will be when I can get out STEM, they will not get out of STEM. This is just a chance for us to do our last minute stuff actually before we go on the trip to Athens for a change as opposed to when we get there at Athens. So Tuesday from 7 to 7, we will be up here and there will be practice. On Wednesday, I will be up here at 7 a.m. and I will be here until we leave at 3.15. So Saturday, Sunday, Monday, no practice. Tuesday, Wednesday, if, if your student, uh, you know, we'd love, this, we'd love your student to come out. And there's definitely some, some as you, I don't know if you saw as you walked in, uh, all that metal that was on the tables is supposed to be part of our robot. So obviously still some work to be done. Uh, so we were hoping that like having that big block of time will allow us to complete all of that stuff. Uh, before we have to leave. Um, that's all going out on Slack as well. So if you have any, like if you can get out there and you need to remember an exact time, easy way to do it. Uh, but if you, like I said, if you ever have any questions about anything that is going on, get your student on Slack. And then what's even better is they can message me or Kellen or anybody else on the team immediately and we will immediately respond back uh, so if you ever have any questions or need information, don't let them put you off by saying, oh, you know, have them get on Slack. And if, if the information isn't in the announcements channel, have them message either me or Kellen, and we will get back to them if we have our phones immediately. And if your student is on the March meal plan, oh, yeah. I'll bring by their lunch um, Tuesday and Wednesday. So that's about Athens. The stuff on the weekend is just them practicing. They're not building, right? Technically, no. Technically, they should be going down to the field to run practice simulations with the autonomous and with uh, the teleop of actually driving with the practice bot. Um, it does seem anytime we use one of the bots that something yeah. inevitably breaks. And so, well, yeah. We are packing up tonight to take some stuff down. Okay. But yes, it should be just practice. Yeah. 
And did you mention Sunday on that? Or no? Yes. Yeah. That just, there's... Yeah, just a note. Sunday's Easter before, so mm -hmm. yes, you have a student says, I want to go Sunday, and like, well, we have Easter. Mm -hmm. I think Kellen may be rethinking that one. Yeah. 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 I would. I think yeah. it may yeah. just be Saturday. Okay. Um, and once again, like, we've had your kid quite a bit here over the last, seems like years, but a couple months, and we're going to take a like, I mean, the second half of spring break is going to be all this robotics thing. So if you want to spend some time with your kid over spring break, which is something that I would enjoy doing, feel free. Like, there is no, I can't make it clear enough that there is no, like, punishment or any type of sanction or anything like that. Any questions about that? Any questions about the Slack and, and making sure your kid is informing you of all the information that they get on a regular basis. Um, and in the Slack, I know this is weird, and uh, it says push the act button. Anytime we post something in the Slack, uh, there are little indicators on the bottom that students can press to tell us, oh, I got this message, like I read this, or hey, I'm excited about this, or, or anything like that. Um, we keep telling them to keep, like, to push it. If you could uh, do some gentle prodding, I know you guys very used to that with, with the high school students, but uh, just so that we know that they've actually read it, because that's how we keep track of making sure everyone's informed, and so we'll send something out and I'll watch like the acknowledgments, or that's how we uh, do voting for when we need a decision made by the team. We'll put out a poll in Slack, uh, for example, the, the naming of the robot. After we finished rebuilding the robot from the last time, uh, they, there was a student poll that went out of what they wanted to rename it, and we had out of the... 35 students, we had 16, 16, 17 actually answer. So it's just hard for us to make sure, like I want to make sure I know it goes to their phone, but then again, uh, with high schoolers, phones are such transitory things, but with, you know, being dropped in toilets and thrown off buildings, and tossing its walls, and loaned out to people and stuff like that. And that'd be especially important in Athens and Houston. Yeah. You know, coach may send out an announcement, lunch is here, come get it. <laughs> And they just need to be paying attention to that, and that's the best way we can communicate. Oh, what yeah. time do y'all roll back in on Saturday night for Athens? So, we should be done according to, okay. According to their schedule, we should be rolling out the same time we typically do at about 7, uh, to get back here around 9. So far this year, FIRST has been really, really good about schedules. Uh, they have held two of them. I've been pretty amazed. So we're hoping that we will be rolling back in at 9. But we've also thrown in a dinner. Oh, that's right. We have thrown in a dinner. So... Probably more like 10 30. Yeah, 10 30. It's a long drive, though, from that. Oh, an hour and a half. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. Mm. Just, we asked the kids, you know, I guess, Coach, you make an announcement yeah, right 20 on. minutes away from mm -hmm. school and call your parents. Oh, we, do a, we do a countdown. When we get on the bus, all right, text your parents. We're leaving Athens. We're an hour and a half out. 30. About 30 minutes later, 30. get out your phones. <laughs> about an hour out. 30 minutes later, get out your phones. We're about 30 minutes away. And even still, there's some times where we'll, get, we'll be like, oh, all right, 10 minutes out. Oh, I haven't texted my parents yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're literally sitting on a bus. <laughs> what else is there to do? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but you will you will be receiving up to date information, and and here's hoping that nothing happens that uh, we can roll out on time and get some dinner, and hopefully it's a celebratory dinner. Yeah. Uh, if not, we might just be giving a pizza. And on that's it. <laughs> get in that seat. We're getting out of here. Yeah. They may not want to go out to. <laughs> I have a question about sure. things they can bring on the plane. Are they yes. allowed to bring their laptops or no? Uh, officially, please visit the TSA.gov. <laughs> so, laptops. However, I've traveled with three young ones through there. Less is more. Okay. Uh, if they bring a laptop, uh, have you flown? You got to open it, turn it yeah. on. It just slows down the process. Yeah, it has to be in its own, has to be in its own little uh, tub. So as please read up on it. And, you know, whatever they take, forget it. I, know. I always think whatever you take, it could be lost, stolen, or broken. Yeah. 
likely any of those. Yeah. I've done these trips for four years now. Someone's always losing or breaking something. Yep. And think about it. These kids are at the venue from 7 a.m. ish to 7 p.m. ish. So and they're busy. They don't have time for lap times. Yeah. They get back to the hotel, then their strategy meetings, yeah. and they have they do have a little bit of play time. But that stuff will be left yeah. behind. Yeah. yeah. And coaches it really and students to manage through security. Yeah. Uh, Tanner's with Miss Dean. You, we just don't want to. Yeah, that's uh, that's the big thing is. Four. If, if there's anything they need to do. Uh, uh, Caitlin, you went last year. Is there opportunities? We drove last year. In the year. car. Oh, yeah, in the car. Uh, you're in the competition. Maybe on the plane flight. It's about as much, it's probably about as much as we had at Dalton, which wasn't very much time yeah. to do anything. Like, I tried. I, tr I brought my laptop to try, and I had maybe 30 minutes on the bus. So. <laughs> All right, bring it up here. Bring it up here. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're more than welcome to bring those things, but one, they're not really going to have any time to use them. Uh, in the venue, they're going to be busy nonstop. In the hotel, uh, they're going to be pretty busy nonstop. Um, even when it's like lights out at night, they're going to be exhausted. It's a... Yeah. It's a big event. Like it, you're constantly running from spot to spot to spot to spot. You're you're watching a million different things going on. Um, you get exhausted pretty quickly out there, and uh, especially when there's only 12 students there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's not usually we have enough people to uh, dole out responsibilities, but I mean, uh, some of the folks that uh, usually go to competition won't be there, so other folks will need to fill in. So yeah, it's going to be a busy time. I mean. And, uh, and also the fact that, I mean, it's it's an international event, so you're talking <coughs> technology convention and the Super Bowl all rolled into one, so, you, I mean, it's, it's a great time for those guys to start meeting other teams from other countries, so, yeah. And there will be a lot of teams from other countries. The Israeli finals were today, and so they're sending uh, 12 teams to Worlds. Wow. And they're good. Yeah, they are good. Yeah, they're they're good. good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember last year at uh, one of the regional events we went to, there was a team from Norway, and they, I mean, they had to have taken up their whole plane, like an entire plane, because there's so there's many of them. So. Where can I see what countries are competing? Uh, so if you go to first is, inspires. Yeah, firstinspires.com, this is the end of the yeah. Okay. Uh, and actually, if you can live stream the event, the opening ceremonies, they give an actual breakdown of how many countries are present, how many students are it's present. It's like the Olympics. They really yeah. Yeah. I really think there are over true. 70 there. It's, yeah. Countries. I wonder if our it's, it's like half the Olympics for okay. robotics. Mm. It's like the Olympics for robotics, just in like split up in two different places. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have Gavin bring back a booklet. They've got some very nice booklets for free. The two weeks that the Obonics camp is on, we're going to be in Ireland for those two weeks. Do you need to take a friend? <laughs> <laughs> so those will be late nights for you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I mean, uh, firstinspires.org is the first website, and they have all the information on there of, of all the different teams. Yeah. Um, you can, if you go to the, and this is, I mean, typically, uh, if you go to the Blue Alliance, which is an app, but you can also access it. Uh, you can go to events, and you'll see, like, they live stream all of these. Um, we can go down, and you can see PCH, the, uh, oh, what was on the wrong week here? Hey, championship Houston. So as you can see, the Duluth event is going on right now. But you can look at all the events from uh, all over the country and all over This is where I was watching the um, the finals in Israel today as it was going on. Wow. My plan. Um, it really is. And you see, like, I mean, it is, it is, I mean, teams from Turkey, teams from Brazil, teams from all over the world. China. China, I mean, they're everywhere. Everywhere. And so uh, the really neat thing is, uh, like last year, my, my team went to a regional event, and on either side we had teams from Turkey. Our kids were talking to their kids, they were sharing, swapping emails, 
uh, taking pictures and putting on, on, on Instagram and Snapchat with each other because it was just a neat thing to be meeting these people from, you know, the other side of the planet doing the exact same thing. How did doing. you place in the world last year? Oh, I didn't play some worlds. They went to worlds last year. We made it to the quarterfinals. That's huge. Yeah. On our field. Yeah. On our field. Yeah. So, and, and within our, our division, which was a field, gosh, there was probably 23, 25. I tried to do stats after I was sharing that with people. Um, Taiwan, China, Israel, Turkey, um, Australia, a couple of countries in Africa, yeah. uh, Mexican teams, Canadian teams, I mean really it's, and, and they're playing with these kids for three or four days. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Russia was there. Yeah. Oh, it's really neat. It really is. I mean, I mean, I, I geek out. I'm, I'm a mentor or a, a coach. You meet the other coaches. You talk to them and you, you know, trade stories about how things are, where they're from. and. And then, you know, you keep those communications open because you're probably going to see them again the next year at the same thing. So you really do start forming bonds. And there's lots of kids that, I mean, one of our mentors is out in California because we've, we've created these bonds with these people. Hope to see her. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's awesome. And so your students will be part of that. Like, if they're going to Houston, they will meet these people. They will start talking to these people. And then, uh, you know, it like, all of your students have... Uh, probably had access or gone on Chief Delphi, whether they've shown it to you or not. And Chief Delphi is just this website that is a big uh, message board for FIRST. Um, and so once you start meeting these people, it makes it a lot smaller of a community because then you're yeah. actually talking to them when they post things, you're like, oh, you know, uh, this team over here, you know, we, we ran into them last year, they were on our alliance, and they're, they're you know, rocking, and you get to keep those contacts alive. and it, I mean, you can ask any of our alumni or any of like some of the mentors that have come back. Like Kellen Hill was on a first team. Uh, Trent Callum was on a first team, um, and they still have those connections with people that they met, even though they're now in college or in the career field, and they still talk to these people. You know, it's a it's a really really neat experience. Yeah, there's an innovation fair at Houston. Uh, I know my kid is into t-shirt trading, so he'll trade one of his team t-shirts after he wears it <laughs> uh, to get Which is, the sounds gross, but it's a wildly it is, popular a thing. Wild I mean, it is yeah. crazy. Yeah. You take t-shirts, really they're worth their weight in like gold. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one thing we didn't mention just popped into my mind is spending money. Oh, yes. Um, there was a lot of opportunity for, for souvenirs, and, and Tracy mentioned the Innovation Fair. Most of the trinkets and things you get there are free, um, but if your kids like to get stuff to remember the event, yeah. it's just like going to a con, it's expensive, oh, I'm not gonna yeah. lie to you. So yeah. they do need spending money and there's concessions that they can get extra food if they're hungry. Yeah. Um, but the team won't dish out, obviously, any spending money for yeah. that. that, that we'll would be not buying goodies. <laughs> but along the t-shirt route, they're, T-shirt trading is a big, big deal, and we like our students to hold on to their T-shirts because it's the quote unquote. But they uniform. actually have a lot but of extras. They do, so make sure they have at least one by yeah. the end of Houston. If yeah. they <laughs> yeah. um, but they can also buy some T-shirts out there and then use those for trading. It's, it cool. really is kind of a fun deal for them to do. That. And and don't, like that. some people don't get into like uh, some people don't get into the T-shirt trading, and some people really get into the T-shirt trading. Um, but for the most part, it's it's teams. There are certain teams that are you know kind of the all stars of first that people work to try and get to one of those shirts or whatever. But uh, it would be something that you want your kid to be prepared for, but not necessarily you know you have to coach them on or anything like that. So. Well, like it's in the works. Like they leverage. I'm going to get this T-shirt so that I can leverage the work for this yeah. other T-shirt. Oh, like so we have extra T-shirts, right? <laughs> Red and, and gray. Uh, we uh, offer to sell those to parents <laughs> whose students might be interested in t-shirts. And my kid's a t-shirt broker, apparently. And <laughs> yeah. his, apparently the Cheesy Poof t-shirt is oh, yeah. very valuable. Oh, yeah. Well, and it's, it's the cheesy. The kid that's come on. Uh, whole pizza and traded in two of his shirts to get one of theirs. It's, it's fun. The Innovation Road is really cool visiting the colleges and seeing new inventions. And Really is that rain? Yes, it yeah. is. What? Yeah. Oh. Mr. Scorch, Mr. Scorch, do you have any extra bags without holes in it? Any extra bags without? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Wow. Man, why? Yeah. Ten-year drought. I start building a house. More rain than we've ever had in the history of Georgia. Jeez. It's spring. The lake is full. That's right. First time ever. But yeah. 
Yeah. Can't catch a break, man. It goes from like, it seems like 40 degrees to like 80. I know. Yeah. All right, uh, does anybody else have any other uh, questions or thoughts? Yeah. All right, well, we hope we gave you guys enough information. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact any of us or have your kid contact us through Slack or, or whatever you need to do to, to get that information. And, and we should get some emails out in the next couple days for uh, dissemination of all this information. All right, everyone, thank you very much. Yep.